Well, I am very excited about our next guest. Yes. Um, I'm hoping I get to hold this little baby. I see it coming right now. Yeah. I am amazed by this. Oh, yeah. <gasps> Hi. It's actually a mountain lion. It's about, uh, oh. about 12 weeks old now. Wow. And he's teething, unfortunately, on my finger. But, ah. Oh. That kind of keeps them busy. You can see those claws reaching out. Yes. There. Gosh, this is amazing. Yeah, they're really cool. You know, when they're when they're born and they're youngsters, they have these spots on them, and as they get older, they'll lose those spots. Well, you know, I, I had a very scary encounter with a mountain lion once when I was uh, near Yosemite Park. Really? And well, they're pretty, um, and they're pretty yeah, they're common out yeah. there. Um, this is a lot less scary than that than that <laughs> moment of my life. Um, but uh, so tell me, tell me about this guy. How big is he going to get? Well, th this is a young male, and as a male, in the western, you know. There's several names for the same animal. Basically, you hear right. mountain lion, cougar, uh, screamer, panther, puma. Those are basically all the same animals. I'm just going to oh, oh. attach that he so we can hear you. Oh, he he so mic. cute. He wants a little mic. So basically, all those names refer to the same animal. You've got the panther, the mountain lion, the cougar, the puma. Um, and on the western side of the country, they tend to get a lot larger because they're fe feeding on larger things, elk and deer and things like that. On the eastern side, where you have like the Florida panther, which is kind of like the same animal, right. it's much smaller because it's feeding on things like raccoons and possums and smaller animals. And down in South America, the puma is a little smaller too, feeding on smaller animals of the tropical forest. So how did you get involved in all this? I mean, you work at a... Miami Metro Zoo, Miami, yeah, Miami Florida. Zoo, yeah. I've always been... Uh, in love with animals. I was born actually here in New York and uh, started at the zoo 30 years ago actually knowing I always wanted to work with animals and it's opened up so many doors for me. I travel around the world studying them in the wild, photographing them and talking to people like you about them. You know, right. the, the job is to try to get people to care about animals and, um, and I think being able to see them face to face like this, seeing the, the, the natural behaviors, it, it kind of inspires a caring. So tell me, you know, with, if I were to, to take that, what's it, is it the name? Yes, this is a uh, Lila. Um, uh, He's really Len insulted that you can't Lenny, 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 I think. Lenny. <laughs> Lenny? Um, so if I were to take Lenny home, how long could I keep him at home before he became actually dangerous to my well-being? I mean, how old is he going to get before that? Uh, about seven, eight months is when they, get, uh, they can be dangerous to a human being. Now, right now, he'd tear up your house. Right. Right now, right. he's just going there, would you know, you? and just start tearing everything up. Would, you, would he eat my dog? No, he wouldn't eat your dog. No, no, no. Hey, you want to try to hold him and see what I it's like? I want to hold here. him. Hold him like this. Just keep him close to you. Don't make him think he can get away because then he'll he'll think he can. And Ooh, oh, yeah. Ah, hey, I got hey, him. Hey, I got there him. There I got him. And he gets hey. rambunctious. Just hold him because there you go. Yeah. Hey, you be hey, good, buddy. You be you good. You like me, no? Okay. <laughs> so watch the claw. I see, I see what you're doing there with your claw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what be, you're doing. Be careful because then you're going to have to do some explaining. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, see, see, that's what I'm talking about. So he really. He they know they're they're wild animals and and so many people. Animals sometimes can sense, you know, if there's a little apprehension and when you're handling them and such. So that's one thing I try to tell people because the unfortunate thing is people actually think they can keep these as pets. No way. It's a huge problem in this country. How can they actually think they that? They do it all the time. You can actually try to buy one of these things on the Internet, which is ludicrous. Matt, you can buy this on the Internet. You can buy it, yeah. This, uh, each state it's requires legal, certain, no? Well, no, each state requires certain permits. But to be honest with you, getting the permits is not as difficult as it should be. Right. So there are people that keep these animals as pets, and it really is kind of tragic. Uh, well, I, I want to ask you also, you know, I mean, I know that mountain lions used to sort of roam all over the United States. You see a ton of them. To be here um, and now, I mean, they're really just in a few areas. Um, what ha can you tell me the history of that? I mean, what happened and, and how can we, you know, make sure that these don't become endangered? It's basically, it's basically just human conflict. You know, with population growth, people just kind of developing areas into these animals' habitat, which right. is why you're having more of these conflicts, like places in the national parks in California and stuff. You have these conflicts. We've had several attacks of, of mountain lions with people and unfortunately some, some, some fatalities. Um, right. So the problem is they've kind of been forced out of their natural area. And as the population continues to grow, and they're forced into certain areas. We're going to have more conflicts, he's and that's so the unfortunate cute. thing. Yeah, he's cute until he gets you. How right? old is he? He's uh, about 12 weeks now. Oh, about 12 weeks. He's so <laughs> cute. Do you want to hold him, Rick? I am dying. Here you go, Rick. Be careful because he'll snag that, that sweater of yours, and then you're going to have like a pull thing, and then you're going to have to like. Go. Yeah, don't you? You'll be good. You'll be good, don't you? Oh my God, he's you? so much nicer to you than he was to me. Ah. <laughs> he I mean, why, is that, why are you smells, like me? He smells something on him. Some food, huh? He smells something on him, yeah. Oh, he so. is so precious. Um, so what? So what are the hunting laws about about these there, guys? There's We're actually talk about this in no. There, you, there's the actually a hunting season in some states. <laughs> oh, be good with those claws. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. I don't need to have talent and crew being hurt by the by the cat here. Um, there are actually some hunting seasons where they have them. Uh, there's also places in California where they have certain hunting for them. But the 
bottom line is now they're pretty much protected over most of their range. Only occasionally there'll be a problem animal that has to be removed because right. it's attacked or it's gone into a human habit, habit, uh, habitation. Uh, but generally speaking, they are protected. But they're very, very adaptive, uh, mm. adaptable. These animals actually, there's been recently there've been sightings in almost half the United States wow. of the cougar. On the wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. So um, they're pretty secretive. People don't see them often, but they're around. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Come here. Imagine him running all around the office. Yeah. Well, Try not, not to. Great. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, if I wanted to, you know, visit one of these, or what zoos have them? And, and are, they, are they treated well in zoos? You know, is, are they okay? That's, that's, a, that's a good it question. It me a little bit. There, there, are, there are zoos throughout the country that are accredited zoos. And right. that's what you need to go to because these accredited zoos have a very high standards they have to meet for these animals. Where you don't, you know, to keep an animal like this in a, in a, in a cage with bars and concrete floor in a sterile environment is horrific. Right. And those, those, those institutions should be removed. They shouldn't be allowed to keep animals like this. But, you know, state of the art zoos will spend millions of dollars now to recreate the national ha natural habitats of these animals. And that's where you can go and really learn about them. Right. And so, so he's you know going to be a natural predator. I mean, he's Absolutely. going to be. That you know, instinct is be, never lost. That instinct is never lost. Who preys on on these guys? Good question. Bears, yeah. wolves will Bears take out and cubs. Wolves. Like, yeah, they're the, the the big enemies of the. How camp. about like jackals? Because they do, they don't they only eat small. You're, ta you're talking about coyotes because jackals were found in basically India, Asia, oh. and Africa. But coyotes, which are kind of like our jackal. Not excellent no, this topic. They're, 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 <laughs> they're not they're not really a threat to the cougar unless they're going right. after small cubs. Right. Oh. Getting restless there, buddy? And I'm sorry, how did you say, how big did you say he was going to get? He's going to get to be about 150 pounds. Males can get to be about 150 pounds. Females about 90 pounds. Females considerably smaller. And if I was to, as I did before, encounter uh, right. Lenny in, uh, in, in a about, while? you know, five years, oh. what, what, well, I mean, I'm, what, am I just a dead guy? I mean, no, I that's just, not true. Is it over? The worst gonna... thing you could ever do with an animal like this is turn and run. It's the worst thing you could ever do. That really is a catalyst. Encounter one of these, never run. ever. With almost any predator, you should never turn around. Even with a domestic dog, if you turn around, that dog almost instinctively is going to chase that's you. That's true. So that's the worst thing you could do. If you see an animal like this in the wild, the best thing to do is hold your ground, keep staring at it, slowly back up, slowly back up. If that animal's not moving anything, the best thing to do is raise your hand up and just scream, just ha ah! like that. Don't do any, don't run at it, but scream. And believe it or not, more often than not, that animal's going to turn around. Turn around. They, they depend much more on ambush. Once they realize they've been spotted, come here, buddy. Once they realize they've been spotted, they're, they're on their own. They're, they're going to leave you. He's giving you some trouble. Well, this have, is you so any, is. have you ever had any uh, uh, injuries? Okay? Yeah, injuries. Oh, yeah, lots of them. Really? Lots of them. As a matter of fact, I met my wife because I got bitten pretty badly by a crocodile, and she was my physical therapist in the really? hospital. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. What has been some of your scariest encounters with animals? Um, in the Angora Goro Crater in Africa, we had an elephant charge our, our, our safari vehicle. Elephants, believe it or not, are the most dangerous animals. Oh, they are. And Africa, yeah. actually, more people are actually killed and injured by hippos than anything else. Oh, I never but elephants, that. elephants can be very dangerous. And I had an elephant come out of our truck and almost tip it over, ram the truck and almost tip it over. And I thought wow. we were goners there. But for whatever reason, it then left us alone. Wow. And what is the worst injury you've ever sustained from one of these animals? It was the crocodile bite. Crocodile I had bite. several broken bones. I had to have some reconstructive surgery on my hand. So. Now, I hear with crocodiles, you're supposed to run in a zigzag. <laughs> is that true? No. My grandparents, just, you know, living in Florida, they always used to tell me, just zigzag if you yeah, start. Yeah, crocodiles just run. That's just it. Okay, that's just that's it. it. Yeah, that's it. Once you're on land, you've got a better chance. In, in the water, you're probably toast if he's deciding he's going to go get you. All right. Well, Ron McGill and uh, Lenny here to uh, talk to us about... Uh, about this little guy, this little uh, mountain lion. There you go. Um, thank you so much for coming by. My pleasure. I want to take him home, but I know it's a bad idea. Sure so right. I won't. Um, but uh, if there are no questions from our chat room, I'm sure there are. They're just all... They're all <laughs> freaking out about how cute he is. Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. Right. What's, what is his typical day? What is he going to do today? He's going to go back to his home in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And he's going to go out and frolic and burn off some of these calories. Oh, so cute. Well, thank you so much for right. stopping by. Take care. You are very cute, Lenny. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye-bye.